What's going on, boys? Today we are talking heroism versus patriotism. And some other things, but we'll get to those. I watched Top Gun Maverick today. Now, normally this wouldn't be my thing, but there was a lot of buzz about this movie. And I like testing predictions. So I guess this movie is going to be this, it's going to push that, and these sorts of people are going to show up in droves, clap a bunch, and probably wear these articles of clothing. So I go, and while I'm jerking myself off thinking I'm smart for noticing something predictable, something interesting happened. The movie had an effect on me. The movie is stupid, cliche, and predictable, but it's a movie about heroism. However, it's actually a movie about patriotism. And there is a distinction between heroism and patriotism that's been blurred to the point there would appear to be no difference. But there is. Heroism is when people do scary things to help other people. Patriotism is a simulation of heroism in which you undermine the things you think you stand for without realizing it and end up becoming villainous or at least used to nefarious ends because the simulation looks, sounds, and feels like heroism. All you see in the moment is a deed you think is heroic. You don't see the many other tentacles of the creature you're fighting to support. Patriotism is parasitic. That's what got me fucked up while I was watching the movie. A large portion of me is wanting to root for these people, despite all the adjectives I could use to describe them, because in this snapshot, or this instance of a larger picture, these people are the heroes, and they're the villains, and the heroes are fighting for something good. It's a heroism story, but it's not. It's a patriotism story. It is not a heroism story. Unforgiven is a heroism story. Few stand against many for a good cause. Top Gun Maverick is a patriotism story. Few stand against many for what government says is a good cause. It sure feels like heroism when you're watching it, and it plays on an animal instinct to win and stand up for what's right, but there is a lot of context you are never going to know about and will be conditioned never to question. You're not doing what's right, you're doing what you're told, and you're hoping what you're told is what's right. But you'll never know, because you'll probably never have first-hand experience. You'll probably never see the effects of what you're doing. And even if you get an inkling of maybe something is wrong, it won't matter to you because the dopamine hit of what you think is heroism will overpower you. Probably because of my heritage on both sides of my family, my upbringing, my family values, and my area, I end up speaking with lots of military people. And speaking with them bugs the shit out of me because although military type people and patriot type people are what they are, occasionally you run across potential heroes. Do you believe in protecting people who can't protect themselves? Yes. Do you believe in standing up to those who would take self-determination away from people? Yes. Would you give of yourself to help someone out of a bad spot? Yes. Would you risk your own death to help people? Yes. Good. How are you going to accomplish all those things? I'm going to shoot people I don't know in places I've never been because this person in charge told me doing so 
would support systems that support our way of life. Systems I don't really understand and have no real experience with. And that is a waste of potential. Patriotism is so dangerous and so effective because it blinds your higher consciousness while appealing to your lower consciousness, your instincts, that animal in you. The worst part is it spreads. We've talked about memes before. Patriotism is a parasitic idea. It hijacks heroism, riles everyone into a frenzy of yay us and nay everyone else, anyone who says otherwise. And then, after a while, that idea stops becoming a thing to think and becomes the foundation upon which other ideas are thought. Propaganda, right? You'll see someone say, wear this armband to support our country. And you'll see it and think, that's stupid, why would wearing an armband support our country? But let's say you're born in a society in which everyone wears armbands, and you've been wearing an armband since you were born, raised to wear armbands. Everyone wears armbands. It doesn't seem like propaganda because that's what everyone does, but it is an influence because you weren't born with an armband. However, even if you recognized all those things and decided to take your armband off, there's not just an ideological pressure from other people for you to put your armband back on. At this point, it's cultural pressure. It's not ideological to wear an armband. It's what you do if you're from this place. Now, that is ideological, but so much time has passed, and it's so common, it doesn't seem ideological anymore. And worst of all, you feel internally the pressure of the armband. You've taken it off, but you aren't free from it because you know you're supposed to be wearing one. Not that you were never supposed to be wearing one or you never needed to. It's not just ingrained in everyone else, it's ingrained in you. Returning to the way you were born is now an act of resistance, not the status quo or the expectation. That's what patriotism is. I mean, patriotism is a meme, but we're talking about patriotism in specific here. You'll notice at the beginning of this example, I said, wear an armband to support your country. As if supporting your country is necessarily a good thing. You point to your own country's history of evil, of cruelty, of hypocrisy, of deception, and so on. You point to specific instances not related directly to you or around you, but to your country's history. Then you point to specific instances of those things around you. Then you point to instances of those things happening to you yourself. Nothing of which a hero would stand for. In fact, a hero would probably stand against in any other circumstance. But you do it under these circumstances, and it's heresy because you are interrupting the feeling of heroism. That's what patriotism is. Even if you get someone, a patriot, to acknowledge the evil in history, in the present, around you, and to you, on all these different levels, one of the most common things you'll hear is, even if all that's the case, you need to be a patriot now so we can fix them. But they never get fixed. You're kicking the can down the road, and while you're doing it, everything is getting a lot worse. And as long as most people don't have personal experiences with that evil, acknowledging them at all, if they acknowledge them at all, they're just things. They have no effect on their lives, so they don't matter. All that matters is feeling like a hero, everything else be damned until they get shafted, at which point they change their tunes a bit, but that's not going to happen with most people. So how do you start undoing patriotism, which is a parasite manipulating 
Heroism. Preventing heroism, real heroism, from happening. During my masters, I had this summer course with a handful of students with a professor who hated me. And I wasn't expecting anything out of it, but it ended up being one of the most important courses I've taken. You need to view people as animals. If people viewed other people as people, we wouldn't be in this situation. People view other people as animals. They don't know what they're doing and they don't care. The people who control them don't care either. They definitely view them as animals. If you're trying to change things on a grand scale and you approach every single human as an individual, you're going to get nowhere. You're going to spend a lot of time on one person using appeals that won't appeal to them because it's an animal you're dealing with, not a human. Once you've severed that link, you can look at them the way you need to look at them to get them to do the things you want them to do. Then you group them. Based on these conditions, this environment, this situation, what would an animal want? What would an animal fear? What would an animal think? If anything, the course was broken up into three distinct legs, but it was frustrating realizing you need things to convince people, not ideas, not evidence. The first leg of the course was about identifying propaganda and its influence in a pre-industrialized society. The professor shoveled a bunch of documents from the 16 and 1700s onto us. Official texts, personal texts, and public responses to official and personal texts. Figure out who the major players in this town are and what agendas they might be pushing. Then, what language are they using to push those agendas? Then, then, what language do common people adapt from the people pushing agendas? Meaning, who is making the memes, why, <laughs> why are they making them, and how are those memes influencing the way people are speaking about current events, in this town, in this pre-industrial time period. Right, you see the components, the financial components, operating in the town. You see the people with power turn those components into a narrative, and then you see the people parrot that narrative. Now there are lies, falsified reports, conflicting reports, but how is anyone going to know any of that with minimal literacy no internet, no real records accessible to the public, and frankly, no interest because the narrative sounds good and makes people money even though these key players are doing some really fucked up things behind closed doors and kind of dooming the town they're living in. The answer is they aren't. They aren't going to know what to look for. They aren't going to be able to look for anything. And in the end, they aren't going to care until the problem is too big to ignore. Now, that first leg of the course, a big chunk of it was learning to identify that fucky-wucky stuff is happening. But another portion of it, or the relevant part here, is understanding you're dealing with those people, those circumstances, right now. People with influence are doing bad things and are hiding problems that are going to get worse. And even though we live in the internet age, in which we can access records of things that have happened, maybe not yesterday, but recently enough and often enough, we have precedent for how these things work, and people still don't give a shit. Even if you show them, because the problem hasn't gotten too big to ignore yet. It hasn't happened to them. To reiterate, you're dealing with animals. 
If you want to counter influence, you cannot view them as people. You'll get nowhere. Second leg of the course. Here is a minor villain from this town. Here is every piece of evidence curated for you to make the perfect argument for why this person should be deposed from power. There isn't much criticism on him right now, but he's well documented. Point out what he's doing and why it's bad as well as you can. You should be able to make a great argument. There are all these sources right here showing all the evil stuff he's doing. I'm sure you can make something convincing. And most of the papers were ideological in nature. My paper was about why this guy was racially hypocritical. He's prettying it up and selling it kind of well. Actually, he was selling it poorly, which should have been an indicator. But it's pretty unbased and not very humanitarian. So curtains get pulled up. Turns out everybody in the town already knew about all these things and nobody cared. Why? Because they got to make money raping and pillaging after an actual pre-industrial false flag. He was one of the instigators, and although he was a hypocrite and doing some questionable things, he created or helped create an excuse for the good old boys to go marching around a swamp and kill people and take their money, or their furs. Even though they were actually buddies, and not just buddy buddies, but business buddies. Sounds a little familiar. Maybe. Nobody cares because they get to play hero and make money. And they get to feel like they were attacked first, even though that was not what happened. Now, the final leg of the course was interesting because at this point I realized it was kind of like a game we were playing. You remember a couple videos ago I talked about boss fights. A good boss is a test of the player's skill. The third leg of the course focused on the big bad. He wasn't just influential in his time period, he was so influential he affected criticism on his writings and his area, his region, for hundreds of years following. So for this one, you're competing with contemporary critics. People are still writing in praise of this dude. And for this one, we were asked to play dirty. Don't just write about the mechanics behind what's happening. Literature and criticism courses tend to be about analyzing the curves in cultural rivers. The scapegoating video. That is a social mechanic. That's what most literary criticism is about. This course was different. Use that understanding to cause damage. Use evidence to prove either Something this dude is doing is causing an immediate and deteriorating problem for someone of the time period, after which precedent and hypocrisy come into play, or you take on a contemporary critic in a similar way, with the intent to do damage. Now, why did we get here when we started with Top Gun Maverick? Well, we've established there's a difference between a hero and a patriot. A hero does what's right, a patriot does what he's told. The patriot will choose to feel like a hero, even if the reality of his or her system does not support the values, the lifestyle, the heroism they claim to uphold, or think they're upholding, because they don't know and they don't care because it hasn't happened to them and it probably won't happen to them. They'll never have to think for themselves, and they'll probably never confront the consequences of their actions. They're probably never going to be on the receiving end of the evil they're facilitating. They're probably never going to see the evil they're facilitating. One, because it gets covered up. Two, because even if they see it, they're conditioned not to see it as evil. 
and even if they do see it and recognize it as evil, they're not going to care unless it affects them. So what do you do? You sound off about how it is affecting them, and how it's going to get worse. You use evidence and reasoning so there's no arguing. If they approach you as a human, as something of consciousness, and you make yourself as approachable a delivery system as possible for your targeted people. That's going to look super different according to your culture and your targeted audience. But the beautiful thing is you don't have to appeal to everyone or worry about appealing to everyone. If your goal at your core is stop bad things from happening without hurting people, you're in a good spot. Stop bad things from happening without hurting people is a basic and global position. If that's your goal, you're already in league with a lot of other people you've never met and will probably never meet. You'll never need to meet because you're working simultaneously toward the same thing across cultures. Other people are already covering you. You can focus on what you need to focus on. There are people who are handling things you can't access. You'll never be able to access. But you're still on the same page. That's why instinct is good. That's why righteousness is good. You can smell it on people the moment you meet them. Right, so now you and a bunch of other people are sounding off with arguments that make sense. Nobody cares because it hasn't affected them yet, but one of the nice things about evil is evil will affect people at some point. It'll come as a shock to them because for the longest time they've been a rat in a small box pressing a pedal to get dopamine hits. But once they're confronted with euthanasia at the hand of the dopamine box, they're going to shape up and start acting like people. Once their beloved system steps on them the way they helped it step on other people, they're going to unplug a bit. When people get stabbed, they want to do something about it. They stop acting like animals, they start thinking ahead, and they figure out how they're going to make a change. That's when you can start treating them like human beings, because firstly, they're going to treat you like a human being. Secondly, they're going to be thinking long and hard about everything they've done up to this point, what they're going to do next, and three, they're going to need help. That's why you were sounding off in the first place. Even though most people either won't hear you or will hear you and will be conditioned not to recognize what you're saying, you're sounding off, so the people who have been confronted with the reality of their situation aren't alone confronting that. You're grouping up for heroism. And we live in a unique situation. We have the internet. It's not hard to group up. It's already happening. Now, all of these little splinters are infected with their own strands of potentially dangerous memes, but it's something, and as long as the goal, the objective, is to make your own decisions and help people, not to do what the man in the suit or the uniform tells you, you are in a good spot. You are at least not getting tricked into hurting people or helping people hurt people. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. What I'm talking about might sound like it applies only to America, but it applies to any organized group pushing its agenda using violence, especially if it's trying to make you feel like a hero. It frustrates me that people use heroic ideas to push villainous 
practices, and nobody on the standard level cares until it's their problem. You have to do all this shit to protect yourself and the few people you really care about against things that we, with the internet, have access to and even commonly know about. Everything gets worse, nothing improves, and we're still every single day tricked into propping up the system. It would be really cool if people could act like people and we could engage in pure heroism and help each other. I hate that that isn't happening. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. I would, I would really like to be able to engage in heroism without having to worry about patriotism and all the dog shit it tracks all over our nice carpet. Like if you enjoyed, because it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't, because we do this shit sometimes, and comment your thoughts, because I love hearing from you. The lengths to which you must defile yourself to make any changes in the world is aggravating. But thanks again for watching, everybody. Really, we have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun, in fact, you can fill it or you can, it's a bottle. The fun is a bottle, and you can fill it up in a, a funny sink, a fun funny sink, that has cold water, and it's nice, and it's where chickens used to get their water. But there are no chickens now. It's three in the morning, I'm very tired. But it's still a lot of fun. So is the water, and so is the sink. But that's how much we have on this channel. And I look forward to doing this with you guys again in... The future.